The remnants of Elsa are almost out of our area, but how long will be staying dry after this? Those details are coming up. Addressing gun violence in Roanoke and beyond. The safety of the public is my number one mission. It is unacceptable. The status quo has to change. What our leaders say needs to change to curb crime. Good evening and thanks for joining us for 10 News at 6. I'm Lindsay Ward. And I'm John Carlin. The uh, video that you're looking at right here out of Botetourt County shows Elsa moving into our area today, bringing some heavy rain along with yeah, it. Yeah, quite ominous. Yeah. But further south, this was the damage in the Raleigh area, down power lines and trees. Now, thankfully, we didn't get that here, but some of us are still seeing some rain out there. Meteorologist Delaney Warden is here. Delaney, this rain isn't nearly as widespread, though, as it was this afternoon. Absolutely. It has really fizzled out the further west that it traveled with the exception of back towards south side. This is what we were talking about yesterday. Charlotte, Halifax County still picking up on some heavy rainfall, whereas you head further off towards the west. What rain we did have left over has fizzled out very quickly, and it's going to continue to be very widespread back towards south side here for the next hour or two. We'll continue to watch this closely. Of course, it has not moved very much, but we will still have to watch out for that flooding threat through about 10 p.m., which is what the National Weather Service still has our flash flood watch. The organization is known for its blessing buckets packed with 26 essential items, including toiletries, food, a Bible and more. Today, volunteers were packing up trucks, getting ready to go down south to help where and when they're needed. We have a warehouse loaded with supplies, life sustaining goods, food, water, Gatorade, different things. We have our drivers ready in case something happens. That way we can deploy at a moment's notice. We also have an immediate response arm that does saw your work and heavy equipment that are ready to go remove debris and cut trees if necessary. And if you would like to help, we have the link to donate on our website, WSLS.com. And as acts of gun violence rise all across the country, and in fact here in southwest Virginia, state and local prosecutors are working on plans to address it. 10 News reporter Annie Schroeder is working for you to show you what they want to happen for crime to trend down. Nationwide, community leaders and legislators are working to address an increase in acts of gun violence. Almost every city with any kind of urban population has seen an uptick in violence for the last couple of years. Donald Caldwell has been prosecuting these crimes in Roanoke City for four decades. He says a number of factors led to the increase. I don't know what it is. Um, but, you know, clearly Roanoke has seen its share. And, you know, knock on wood, I'm hoping it doesn't get any worse. Attorney General Mark Herring says change is needed on a national level. Our country and our state has a gun violence problem. Herring says stronger background checks and additional funding could help curb the problem. So I'm going to work to try to access as much of that new funding as possible that the president has talked about and try to get them into as many communities as possible. This November, Herring will face off against Jason Miares for the attorney general role. The safety of the public is my number one mission. I'm a former prosecutor. Miares says most of these crimes are committed by repeat offenders. So if you want to lower gun violence, you go after those repeat offenders and you get them out of our neighborhoods. Still, local law enforcement officials agree it will take the work of everyone to address the issue. Uh, law enforcement has to have the support of its community. The community has to have the support of its courts, and judges, legislators, all of that work together in the ecosystem of solving this problem. Annie Schroeder, 10 News, working for you. A man is expected to be okay tonight after a shooting late last night. It happened on Pierce Street in Lynchburg, not far from Reservoir Park. According to police, they were called to the area around 1130 for a report of shots fired. When they arrived, they found a man who was hurt near the road. They started to render aid before our, our, medics, our medics got there and transported him to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Um, just investigating the, the incident further, our officers located um, some items of evidence in that area, uh, which led to a search warrant being executed. Police have not released a motive or if the suspect and victim knew one another. 
Another change to the Salem Fair. Starting tonight, kids under 17 years old will need to be with a parent or guardian over 25 years old that has a valid ID while on the fairgrounds. As we've previously reported, the gates uh, new, uh, close each night at 10 p.m. Everyone will be subject to bag checks. They must go through a walkthrough detector to get in as well. Police have also increased staff through the fairgrounds. Now, all of these changes were made after last week's shooting. And the search for that man missing in Patrick County from the resort there have now been, has now been suspended because of the rain. As we've reported, 61-year-old Bruce Rubin has not been seen since Friday. He was last seen jogging at the Primlin Resort in Meadows of Dan. He was staying as a guest at the resort. We're still a few weeks away from the start of the fall semester, but the deadline for students to be fully vaccinated is fast approaching. Virginia Tech is keeping track with a vaccine dashboard. It shows how many students and staff have gotten their shots. All students must report being fully vaccinated by August the 6th, and time is running out. To meet that deadline, you need to get your first dose of Moderna today. So while it feels like August is still a long way away, we've just celebrated the 4th of July. It's so important to remember that in order to be fully vaccinated, you, you may need 21 or 28 days in between vaccination shots to be fully vaccinated. Five other local universities require vaccinations, and we have that list on our website, WSLS.com. New tonight at 6, as you do your grocery shopping, you may have noticed some of your go-to items like meat, seafood, and paper products are costing a little more these days. Local businesses are feeling the effects as well. Lynn Street Market in Danville says they've seen a dramatic price increase over the past six months. The co-owners say some food items they used to constantly have in stock, they're now, uh, now not buying because of the drastic price jump. They say some foods like ground beef and crab legs have nearly doubled in cost. I would get a case of meat normally for about 250 and now I'm around 400 and I don't want to extend that price to my customers because I still want them to have access to good quality food so therefore our profits take a dip so we take it away from the profits and therefore not overcharge our customers for it. They say customers have been understanding when products are out of stock because of the price increase. A legacy that lives on the event this weekend to honor Rowan Price and help other families in a similar situation. And some big stars in country music are coming to Southside, the three-day event, pulling in some of country music's biggest names. WSLS 10 News, the proud winner of two 2021 Emmy Awards for Best Daytime Newscast and Best Evening Newscast. Taking a love of motorsports and turning it into an opportunity to change lives. This weekend, Hope Driven will host the Hero Expo. It's a car, truck, and bike show raising money for medical expenses of local sick children. The event was named after Rowan Price, a young girl who battled leukemia. Rowan's mom says the nonprofit Hope Driven touched the whole family's life with the event's generosity. It really touched our heart and they raised over $10,000 for our family, which went towards our living expenses, expenses for Emory, our medical expenses, um, and then eventually, unfortunately, funeral expenses. So um, it just really means a lot that there is help out there in this form. And Hope Driven has already picked out two other families to help raise money for. If you would like information on Saturday's Hero Expo, you can log on to our website, WSLS.com. Well, some big names are coming to Southside for the Blue Ridge Country Festival. The three-day event will be in Danville at the Blue Ridge Amphitheater off Route 29, the same place that will hold the Blue Ridge Rock Fest. But this festival will be October 1st through the 3rd. Let's take a look at the artists. They include Darius Rucker. He's a country star, but he's also the former lead singer of Hootie and the Blowfish. And there's Rodney Atkins, who sings Take a Back Road. Sunshine and Whiskey singer Frankie Ballard and Barefoot Blue Jean Night singer Jake Owen. I love those songs. You can find even more of the lineup at WSLS.com. Yeah, those are certainly big names. A supply struggle hitting our Home for Good project. We've never seen it like this. The shortages we're seeing that many of you are also facing. 
And we're nearly done with the remnants of Elsa, but we have many more chances of rain in your seven day forecast. We'll take a look at that coming up. The work continues on our Home for Good project, but it's not immune to the struggles that many of you are facing. Absolutely. Supply shortages are delaying our volunteer project by about two months. Today, 10 News McKinley Struther hammered down on the issues every construction company is facing right now. Building a home takes determination. <laughs> yep, I've been having fun doing it today. A plan. When you hang the drywall inside, you see the rooms. And on the outside, it's like putting the clothes on the house. Okay, so you're locked this way. Okay. The way we are. And nowadays, it definitely takes time. I think for hours and hours until this work is all done. Should be about a quarter inch in the window. What used to be maybe a couple weeks has doubled or even tripled in how long it'll take to get some products. Habitat for Humanity in the Roanoke Valley is just the latest home building company to be hit by construction delays. We've never seen it like this. Builders say new home sales are the highest they've seen since the mid 2000s. Habitat has seen major shortages in grant money and volunteers. So if I had my way, it'd be going a lot faster. This home is delayed by two to three months, others even worse. There's really not an end in sight for that. Regardless, they have a good goal to build a home for good, no matter how long it takes. Yeah, it feels good to be feel back. What he said there at the end was, it no. feels good to give back. That is the son of one of our co-workers, Mike Carden. That's Jack Carden. He was so excited to be on TV and be out there to help today. Yeah. But it does feel good to be back, despite the fact that it's taking a very long time. Well, I mean, for July, too, I mean, it was a great day to be out volunteering. I know a lot of you guys gave up your time and, and energy today to go out there, so it was pretty cool. Yeah, well, that home is supposed to be done uh, by the end of this month, Lindsay, but it's not going to be done until early September now. And just, that's fingers just crossed because on of that. the construction because delays. of the Yeah, yeah, it's, infecting, it's impacting everyone. Okay, thanks, McKinnon. Thanks for the hard work, too. <clears throat> Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. Getting a live look from our sky cam overlooking downtown Roanoke. And yes, you are seeing that right. We are seeing a little bit of a break from the clouds some blue skies out there. Most of us dry at this hour. That is not the case, of course, for South Side, at least for Charlotte and Halifax County, who are still under a flash flood watch until 10 p.m. Current radar showing the rain that we saw moving off towards the northwest just hours ago eventually shifted to move back towards the southeast. But as it did so, it really started to fizzle out very quickly. We still have some heavy rain in portions of South Side. However, you'll notice that that has continued to dissipate and weaken here over the past few hours. We won't be dealing with Elsa's remnants for too much longer. As for off to our west, they are, excuse me, off to our east, they will continue to deal with some very widespread rain along with some gusty winds. Future tracker at the moment showing that rain off to our east. We could see a little bit more rain in portions of the New River Valley overnight. I think that it's going to be very isolated though and then we head towards uh, Friday right around lunchtime already seeing some isolated showers firing up but they are going to pack a punch tomorrow and a big reason for that is going to be because we're going to bring in those hotter temperatures once again into the upper 80s where we should be for this time of year but that plus the humidity we are going to create an unstable atmosphere so we'll have to watch these closely for a severe threat you're noticing they're really kind of focused along and south of 460 we'll keep an eye on it but it continues to move out I would say close to 5, maybe even 6 p.m. Things are looking much better for us. We've been talking about the drought south side holding on to that moderate drought. However, things are going to be looking better. So this is our newest drought monitor as of today. This does not take into account our rain from today. We'll see that in our uh, drought monitor next week, but you can already tell that we are definitely going to see that that rain was beneficial for you. For tonight's temperatures, though, we are down into the 60s by tomorrow morning, a very mild night for us. And of course, it is staying muggy out Side. We're not getting rid of those muggy conditions here for the next several days. Tomorrow afternoon, more spotty showers, temperatures into the 80s once again. Once again, these are the temperatures that we should be seeing for this time of year, holding on to some of those upper 70s and lower 80s in the New River Valley. Humidity levels, there we go. If anything, Saturday looking to be our best day, but even so, it is still going to be muggy out there for you on Saturday. Stay hydrated if you do have plans outdoors. We have to make sure that, uh, of course, 
course, when it's more humid outside, you can get a little bit more dehydrated for this weekend. We'll watch those hot and humid conditions create more storms, but then we head into next week and it's going to get even hotter. Yes, it is going to get even hotter. However, we are going to see that potential for some storms gradually start to decrease. So there's some good news for us. Three day zone forecast has us in the 80s over the next several days, with the exception of south side lower 90s for you. Lynchburg area seeing similar temperatures into the mid to excuse me, low to mid 90s by Tuesday. A little bit of a break from the rain coming up on Wednesday before more rain chances return for Thursday. Brooke. All right, coming up in sports, Wimbledon semifinals under the underway this morning. And can the Bucks level the series tonight against Phoenix in the NBA championship? And coming up tonight on 10 News at 7, the July 4th sales may be gone, but your chances to score a great deal are still around. We'll tell you which items have deep discounts and keep your summer budget intact. That's next at 7. The baseball diamond this summer is certainly shining brighter than it was in 2020. All of our local minor league teams back in action, including the Lynchburg Hillcats, who have certainly welcomed back the great fans in the Hill City and beyond. The progress to reach normalcy is still a work in progress, but Hillcats GM Chris Jones says it's promising. Uh, it started out slow. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it was a tough one. We didn't know how it was going to go, but this last weekend with July 3rd and 4th gave me hope for the rest of the summer. So I, I hope people continue to come out and, you know, we provide great family fun entertainment. And sadly, no baseball scores to report tonight. Lynchburg was on the road at the Mudcats. Game postponed to Saturday due to rain. And Salem is at Delmarva and will play two games tomorrow. We're out of time. You We're can't explain yourself. Anderson, the news coming up next. <laughs> we'll see you at 7.